Good evening. How we produce our food humanely is back in the spotlight tonight. This time the misgivings are over the dairy industry. As you buy your milk, yogurt and cheese at the supermarket, you may not be aware of the common practice used to get it there. Farmers say the premature birthing of carbs is a valuable management tool. But there are fears it could tarnish our international reputation and threaten our exports. A warning now that some may find the pictures in our story disturbing. Catherine Wheat has been investigating the ethical dilemma and joins us now live from northern Manawatu. Good evening. Well, milking has started in a lot of dairy sheds like this one across the country. But for a cow to produce milk, it needs to have a calf. And not all cows in a herd calve at the same time. So farmers are faced with an ethical dilemma. Do they wait for those late cows to calve naturally? Or do they induce them so their calves will be born dead, but they can start producing milk with the rest of the herd? The reality on many dairy farms. One user's obtained these pictures from a South Island property. It shows dead calves which have been deliberately born prematurely. The practice is called inducing. It's carried out by vets and farmers so all the cows in a herd calve at the same time and produce milk earlier. It's humane. Uh, I mean, the ethical dilemma all farmers face, and even my grandfather and great-grandfather did as farmers, that to get milk production... You have to you have to um, destroy some calves. About 200,000 cows are induced in New Zealand each year. The vet gives the cows two injections, so their calves will be born 8 to 12 weeks premature. Most are born dead and some alive. Canterbury farmer Graham Wells is inducing about 70 of his cows this year. There is a small financial benefit there. However, the main reason is just getting those cows to be calving at the right time of the, of the year. How does it make you feel when you see these dead calves in the paddock? The, if the management process is done properly, there aren't very many of them that are, are alive, and any that are still alive are humanely euthanised. How? Um, on our farm with a firearm. This footage was filmed by a former employee of another South Island farm. It shows this premature calf struggling to survive after its mother was induced. The farm owner would not speak to us on camera but defended the practice. More inductions are carried out here in the South Island. The herds are bigger so more cows are induced. For example, the average size herd here in Canterbury is about 700. So some farmers will induce up to 100 cows. Inductions were introduced 40 years ago, but it's becoming an ethical issue that's dividing the dairy industry. Years ago I, did, I was part of inductions and I've changed my mind since then. Most vets we talked to want it stopped. Times have changed, public perceptions change and the requirements of overseas markets change. So this is just moving on and acknowledging that and, and phasing it out. Inductions are legal, but the government's code of welfare for dairy cattle says it's best practice not to do them on healthy animals. The industry originally agreed to end inductions in October, but it's since decided to gradually phase them out. Nobody realises what we actually do in this industry and how cruel it really is. And um, New Zealand could seriously pay a price if this gets out. I don't see any, any brutality in it, um, given that it's done under the management plan. Risks to animal welfare are well managed. Fonterra doesn't support the practice, but still collects milk from farmers who induce. If inductions were banned, however, the Vet Association says milk production in New Zealand could fall. Well, there's no strict auditing of the inducing practice. Some vets I've spoken to say they simply refuse to do it, and others claim that they feel that bullied into it by the farmers. So it's becoming a very controversial issue, and the only way to stop it is if the Agriculture Minister legislates to ban it or the drug used is deregulated. Until then, it will be used until it's phased out. Thanks, Catherine. Catherine Wedd reporting live from northern Manawatu.